So basically today we are discussing about the uh, most important engineering materials which are called semiconductors and to understand semiconductors initially we have to understand the band theory of solids. Before we go for band theory I will explain you the how bands are formed in solids. To understand that we all know that any matter it is consisting of the fundamental unit which is called as atom. Atom is the indivisible fundamental unit of any matter existing on the earth. Okay. And we all know atom is consisting of positive as well as negative charges along with neutrons. So within the atom we have positive charges, we have electrons, we have protons, we have neutrons. And all the positive charge within the atom is concentrated at the center of atom. This portion is called, what it is called? Nucleus. Diameter of this nucleus it is of the order of 10 to the power minus 15 meter. Whereas all the negative charge that is all the electrons within the atom they are systematically distributed around the nucleus. They are revolving in definite orbit and this region where the electrons are revolving it is called as electron cloud. So, the diameter of this electron cloud it is of the order of 10 to the power minus 10 meter. Okay. So within atom you have positive charges that is protons you have electrons but atom is electrically neutral that is because within the atom center of gravity of positive and negative charges they coincide with each other and atom is electrically neutral. Okay. Within the atom the uh, Electrons revolving in the outermost orbit, those electrons are called as what? Valence electrons. And each atom is identified by the energy level associated with its valence electron. That means if you have one atom like this, then the valence electron of this atom it will have certain energy. That energy, suppose it is Ev, and this atom is identified by this energy level. Okay. Now in solids, what happens? The number of atoms they are closely packed together. They are in physical contact with each other. For example, to this atom, again you have one more atom of the solid like this. Now these two atoms they are in contact with each other. As a result, what happens? The valence electron of this first atom and valence electron of second atom they are experiencing the same charge in moment. That means valence electron of first atom here it will be influenced by nucleus of neighboring atom. At the same time valence electron of second atom is also getting influenced by nucleus of first atom because of which the valence energy levels they are slightly modified and now you have two valence energy levels corresponding to these two atoms those can be Ev and Ev dash which are very close to each other. That way within the atom you have uh, within the solid actually you have uh, practically speaking infinite atoms and to be precise around 10 to the power 23 atoms per cubic meter are present in a solid. So these atoms they are mostly in physical contact with each other as a result. The nucleus of neighboring atom it influences the valence electrons of the neighboring atoms and so on. And you get a band which is consisting of large number of energy levels. These energy levels are corresponding to the valence electrons of each atom and that's why the band consisting of such energy levels which are representing the energy of valence electrons of all atom. These band, these energy levels they constitute a band which we refer as valence band. The same situation is true for the inner bands also but inner orbit atoms they are very tightly attached to nucleus. 
So it is not possible that those electrons, inner orbit electrons of the atom, I should have said electrons. So inner orbit electrons of these atoms, they are very tightly attached to nucleus. As a result, they cannot be freed from the atom. And that's why the portion consisting of energy levels of inner orbit electrons, it is called as core portion, which is a passive portion, which is not taking any active participation in functioning of that uh, material, you can say. As a result, we talk about valence electrons only, and the energies corresponding to these valence electrons, they are forming a band, which is called as valence band. Within this valence band, we have large number of discrete energy levels. These energy levels are discrete, but they are so close to each other that for practical purpose, this valence band is treated as a continuous band of energy. Okay? This valence band, it can be completely filled, it can be half filled or it can be partially filled. Depending upon the number of valence electrons, the properties of materials are defined in terms of their electrical conductivity because materials, they will be having different properties like electrical conductivity, mechanical properties, thermal properties and so on. Out of which, if we talk about the electrical conductivity of material, we all know that what is flow of electricity? Flow of electrons is electricity. That means if we want some material to conduct electricity, then it is but natural that we will think the electrons should be available so that they can flow and current will be carried. But looking at this situation, you come to know that every element, every matter, every material is consisting of atom and all atoms are having electrons. So electrons are there with all atoms, but all materials are not able to conduct, that is because we need free electrons to conduct electricity. So, electrical conductivity of the material can be satisfactorily explained by using band theory of solids and according to this band theory of solids, within solids you have a valence band which is consisting of all the energy levels associated with all valence electrons within that material and these energy levels as I said those are discrete but those are so close to each other that for practical purpose we treat this as continuous band of energy. Then Above valence band, next allowed band is called conduction band and this conduction band is separated by a gap which is called as forbidden band. Okay? Forbidden band lies between the upper energy level of valence band and lower energy level of conduction band. That means top of the valence band to bottom of conduction band, whatever gap is there, that is called as forbidden band. So this is the band structure within solids. In the solid you have different bands. The band consisting of energy levels associated with valence electrons is called valence band. The higher permitted band is called conduction band and these two bands are separated by a gap which is called as forbidden band. So according to band theory, the width of forbidden band within the solid will decide either the solid is conductor, semiconductor or insulator. So if we classify solids into three classes, that is conductor, semiconductor and insulator. This is for discussing the electrical property of solid. Okay. So, when valence band electrons cannot go to conduction band, they will not be able to conduct. In normal language, structure wise, let me tell you that the electrons which are lying in the valence band, those are attached to the nucleus of that atom. But by any ways, if those electrons are freed from that nucleus, those are called as free electrons and free electrons are meant to be in conduction band. 
so for any solid to show electrical conductivity it is not enough that electrons are available in valence band it is essential that electrons are available in conduction band then only the solid will be conducting okay now in case of insulator we will start from insulator we know insulator is a material which is not able to conduct electricity for any reason that means the width of forbidden band is so large it is greater than 3 electron volts or up to 10 electron volts it goes so if the forbidden band width is very large valence band electrons will not be able to cross over this gap and come in conduction band if electrons are not coming in conduction band what that indicates that indicates ki the solid is not going to conduct so such solids in which conduction band electrons cannot be made available by any ways we place them in insulator category those are insulators where the forbidden band is very large okay then there are certain solids in which you have the moderate width of this forbidden band that means forbidden band is existing there but the width is so small it is around of the order of 1 electron volt or less than 3 electron volts the rest but it is around 1 electron volt or so so in such solids where the forbidden gap is very small forbidden band is very small what is the possibility ki at absolute zero temperature valence band electrons will not have any energy to cross over the gap and come in conduction band that means the solid will behave as insulator at absolute zero temperature but at slightly higher temperature the valence band electrons can cross over the smaller gap and they can get into conduction band once they come in conduction band they will contribute towards conduction of electricity so at slightly higher temperature the same material is behaving as conductor that is the reason this material is called semiconductor which has the properties of insulator as well as conductor that's why it is said that at absolute zero so semiconducting materials they act as insulator at slightly higher temperature they behave as conductor so they possess properties of both insulator as well as conductor but the situation for conductors is totally different according to band theory in case of conductors i will try to draw and show you the situation is ki in conductor materials actually the conduction band and valence band they physically overlap each other that means in normal language if we say that there is no band structure present in conductors it's a continuous structure no gaps are there so in conductor conduction band and valence band are physically overlapping each other no gap existing what that indicates ki valence band electrons are always available in the conduction band that is the reason conductors are always ready to conduct for any reason under any circumstances at any time because always they are having electrons available in the conduction band so this is what is the explanation of classification of solids on the basis of band theory and this is the band structure existing in solid which is different for conductors semiconductors and insulators